I asked you guys on Instagram if you know what a permiforest and I've gotten some pretty interesting answers. Huh? Permiforest? I only know jungle and forest. Is there a secondary or even university forest? So today, we are going to explore Bukit Timah Nature Reserve to find out what is a Premier Forest, what you can find in there, why it is so important, and the most important question of them all. Is there a secondary or even university forest? We are going to start our journey by exploring Hindhead Nature Park, which is located at the foot of Bukit Timah Hill. We will then venture into Bukit Timah Nature Reserve via the steep slopes and trek through the secondary and primary forest and reach the final summit at the very end. Nature parks such as Hindhead are usually located near nature reserves and can be referred to as buffer parks or areas. This is because they literally protect or buffer the nature reserves against developments around them. Maybe just like a lot of legs just can you see? It's a yellow shell semi slug. As a buffer park, Hindhead Nature Park also provides a complementary habitat for the flora and fauna in Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. This is important because our nature reserves include mature secondary forests and also primary forests which are dominated by large native tree species. Such an environment makes them important homes to many of our rare and native wildlife species and they function as source habitats. So source habitats, right? Imagine like when you're playing Tota, you know you have a home base area where the, the creeps or the monsters, they tilt you, you out and then they disperse. Yeah, nature parks are important firstly because they help to protect our nature reserves, aka our tilt 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 source habitats from developments that are next to them. And secondly, because it expands the range in which our wildlife can explore. As such, these nature parks tend to be kept rustic and forested which makes them richer in biodiversity compared to our gardens and parks. This nature park is actually a good place to spot for birds and animals and seeing how the pathway is you know, well paved and well designed it's actually suitable for many people to come to find for animals especially the forest birds you know, that may have travelled all the way from Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. Ooh, the tree is fruiting! This is the common yellow stem fig tree. It's a really good food source for the birds to eat, you know, especially during fruiting season. And when the fruit drops to the ground, right, they are also food source for you know terrestrial animals such as macaques, squirrels, and even mouse deers. It's a snake skin! It's like the, the shed, the shed skin of a snake. Oh, can you see, can you see, can you see? This wide open space here that opens up to a quarry is like one of the secret bird watching locations where you can find a lot of cool birds here, including migratory birds. And you can also find six out of the eight kingfisher species that we have in Singapore. If we go back in time, almost the entire island of Singapore used to be filled with primary forests. As Singapore developed, around 90% of these forests were cleared for timber extraction, agriculture, and creation of settlements. This means that by the 1900s, we were left with fragmented patches of primary forests in parts of Western Singapore, Singapore Botanic Gardens, the Central Catchment Nature Reserve, and of course, Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, where we are heading towards now. Our gardens and parks may not have the same biodiversity as our forests, but they have their own wildlife communities and they serve an important role in allowing wildlife to move between the green areas in Singapore. So this is how we facilitate ecological connectivity for the animals. To help us find this very important primary forest, we have invited MPARKS Group Director of Wildlife Management, Dr. Adrian Lu, to be our forest guide. Okay, hi MJ. So hi. today we'll be going to the summit. Right. So that's the tallest point in Singapore, 163 meters. Sounds great. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. All right. Let's go. <laughs> oh, Adrian, you got oh, you got an end. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, thank end you. Gone. Thanks for saving me. <laughs> I saved him from an end. If yeah. there's a primary forest, right? Does yeah. it mean there's a secondary or even university forest? <laughs> no, definitely there's a secondary forest. On your right, actually, you can see a very late secondary forest. Definitely university forest is not a thing. Yeah. Okay, MJ, uh, we're going to uh, this path, South View Path, okay. and you can see the beginnings of the vines here. That's like an indication that the forest is very mature ah. and then slowly becoming a primary forest. If primary forests are forests that are untouched, secondary forests are forests that have regrown for decades on land that has been disturbed by fire or cleared for development such as plantations. So mature secondary forests are secondary forests that have grown for quite some time and they are home to a wealth of species that is similar to that of primary forests. This is Taka in Tegrifolia and it's a very beautiful uh, bed lily. Sometimes when you see one flowering, you see others flowering because they have to flower at the same time, you know, so that they can cross-pollinate. Okay, yeah. okay. So we're quite lucky that we are seeing this. It looks like wow. a bed, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh my goodness! Adrian is very far! 
He's so fit. I can't. So MJ, welcome to the primary forest. Oh, okay. Feel the difference. In terms of temperature, it's much more cooling, right? Right. Well, you have the canopy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you've got a lot of leaves, um, and then it's you know locking in. There's a lot of transpiration as well, um, and basically shading from the heat. Uh. This is the diptero cup family. These are actually like the pillars of the forest. You know? mm. So these are the fruits of the diptero cups. Diptero cups means two wings, so they are like two winged fruits, and they dispersed by wind, like. You want me to throw it? Throw it to her. <laughs> Primary science students, it's in your syllabus, must learn. I, I'm, a rattan has caught me. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, must I save you again? I'm glad they caught me because then I can show you what a, a proper yeah. rattan is. Uh. So this is a fishtail rattan. In the past, right, it was a very economically important plant. It still is in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. The spines are backward ah. pointing. The purpose is not to trap humans. Okay. Uh, the purpose is to actually climb, climb as it grows. Okay, yeah, okay. it just catches onto a, ah, a tree, the branches, and then it starts climbing. Eh, hey, copy me, copy me, the pig pop pop! <gasps> so cute! Colossus are really cute mammals that can glide from tree to tree because they have this fur covered membrane that connects the head and between the limbs. So yeah, they are usually more active and glide more frequently at night, but sometimes in the day when you see them, right, they can be just perching on top there like. There, which is what we're looking at it right now. These remaining patches of Premi Forest are important stronghold areas for our native wildlife like the Kalugo and especially our rare and elusive ones such as our slow lorises, Sunda pangolins, and lesser mouse deers. I think that's a drongo. Yeah. Oh. So the drongo, right? Um, the Malay name is the macaque follower. No? You know, macaques they'll be like sifting through, climbing disturbing mm -hmm. the insects in the canopy. Mm. And then, that's where you actually see these birds following mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a very interesting phenomenon. Oh! This is the smiley stem. Yeah. I like this so, one! Yeah, it's quite interesting actually. Every every weekend when you come here, yeah. or every day, la, you know, it changes. La. So, it's, it's one feature of Bukit Timah. It's quite endearing actually. Yeah, it yeah. is! We can yeah. give it a name now. Yeah, what are you going to call it? Not up to my... It's the um emoji trunk. Oh, I like it! Emoji trunk! You have a name now, your emoji trunk. Okay, I'm emoji trunk. <laughs> I've brought you to this very giant native tree called the Kempas. It's mm. about 70 over meters tall. In particular, this tree you know, has seen us through the war, uh, will see us through COVID, and, the, and will see us in good times as mm. well. When we launched the uh, One Million Tree Movement last year, we actually uh, used this silhouette uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to make the icon. Yeah. Oh, so cute! Another one. Another one! We spot like... I think four already. We did it! Yeah. Whoa! Yeah, we did Wait, it. we should find the, the rock with the <coughs> summit sign, right? Oh yeah, come. That's the... Yeah. Yeah, we reached the summit! We reached the summit! Yeah. Woo! Yeah, we did it! Like how I mentioned earlier on, our original primary forest has been fragmented into a few core biodiversity areas. But recent efforts like the Clementi Nature Corridor have shown how these forested areas can be ecologically connected. So Adrian, can you share with us a little bit more about how this works? Sure. In an exercise known as the Ecological Profiling Exercise, we identified the source habitats like Bukit Timah Nature Reserve as well as green corridors between which animals can move. By knowing these ecological connections, right, we can plan development in a way that will not disrupt wildlife movement. So one such example of this ecological connection is the Clementi Nature Corridor. We incorporate these ecological corridors when planning for development so that we can enhance and protect these places to cause as little impact to nature as possible. The range of some of our wildlife can span across large areas and they need pathways to move between source habitats. When we increase ecological connectivity by protecting such nature corridors, the animals living in our primary forest can then venture out to explore new territories and move seamlessly between source habitats. This will also prevent inbreeding within one area and reduce human wildlife incidents such as boat kills. Bye-bye, Adrian! Bye -bye, Thank you for showing me around! Thank you! Bye -bye. Reach the summit! Bye-bye! Alright, conclusion! Conclusion! As fragmentations had already occurred in the 1900s, it is important for us to conserve the remaining primary forests that are extremely precious to us. Through the Nature Conservation Master Plans, NParks has set up plans for biodiversity conservation efforts in Singapore. As we move towards our goal of becoming a city in nature, we have to balance the need to conserve nature and develop our urban areas. 
Most importantly, we will be living among nature and we can do so by experiencing and appreciating nature with minimal impact to our biodiversity. When we visit any of our green spaces, take nothing but photographs, leave nothing but footprints. Stay on designated trails, keep your voices low and please, please do not feed our wildlife. Let's all learn to live harmoniously with nature so that we can share its beauty for future generations to come. Just keep thinking!